Okay, this meeting is called to order. This is a meeting of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. This is a general board meeting. It is uh, September 15th, it's Thursday at 6.06 .06 p.m. Um, I'm Sarah Clendenning, president, and I wanna thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, and with that, we're gonna do roll call. Secretary Sanchez. Sarah Clendenning. Present. Ben Wadsworth. Present. Vincent Chenta Montalvo. Present. Fernanda Sanchez, present. Nancy Estela Soto. Present. Benny Madera. Present. Annalie J. Har. Present. Melanie Bolomo Shiplet. Here. Didia Delizer. Jared Gunsberg. Present. Diego Julian Zapata is not here. Gail Arevalo. Here. Richard Gato Ortiz is not here. Steve Lucero. Here. Selena Ortega. Present. Esmeralda Landeros. Present. That's 14 members. We have quorum. Excellent. Thank you, Secretary Sanchez. Okay, with that, we're going to go on to item number two, uh, public con comment on non-agenda items, two minutes per person. So if there's anybody from the public who has something to say about something that's not on the agenda, please raise your hand or press star nine. You have two minutes to speak. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. We're going to move on to item number three, community and board announcements. Um, are there any board member announcements? Two minutes or one minute each. Raise your hand, board members, if you have any announcements. No? All right, so we're going to go to community announcements. So if there's anybody from the community who has an announcement, you have two minutes to make your announcement. Um, please press star nine, right, or raise your hand. We have Kwana Lambert um, from LA Boys and Girls Club. You have two minutes to speak. Kwana? Hey, Hello. Hey, hi. Can you see me? I can't see me, but I, uh, I can see all of you. How are you? <laughs> okay. um, um, yeah, wanna, if you want to speak on the item too, we can put you as panelists too uh, when we get to the item. So what if, whatever you want. I just wanted to speak to you about uh, you know the recent events that occurred and wherever you want to put me is perfectly fine with me. Um, yeah. Vince, should we br bring one up as a panelist yet? or? Well, I would wait till we hit the item. Oh. We can all put it in order. Right now, let's just keep it on the... Uh... What are we on the public comment? Okay. Community announcements. So uh, yeah, one. If you want to speak for a couple, like two minutes now, and then we'll bring you on as. Okay. The item. Well, first of all, it's very nice to have the opportunity to speak to the neighborhood council. Um, um, as you all know, we had a carnival that the Boys and Girls Club put on. We had a it's our sixth year. I know I'm repeating what you already know, but it's a six year of doing the neighborhood uh, family carnival. And unfortunately, as we all know, this year we had a tragedy. Um, and um, uh, it's really unfortunate that we have these two young men, which we know, um, <clears throat> they're not currently part of our Boys and Girls Club, but they have been in the past. And it's a very sad thing for, I think the whole, community of Lincoln Heights to lose these two young men. Um, I think the carnival was for the most part, a very positive family event and people were enjoying it. And it's too bad that we had an ending with such a tragedy in our community. Um, but I, I have more to say about it. I don't know if you want me to go ahead now and talk about it. Uh, we're trying at this point to organize counseling. Um, we managed to, um, get funding from Boys, Boys and Girls Club America and Hilda Solis' office to help us to provide counseling. So we, 
are trying to offer that to any kids. I think people were really frightened. It was very scary. I don't know if any of you were there at the time that it happened. It was nine o'clock at night on Sunday night. And um, a lot of people were very fearful that it might be like a mass shooting or, uh, and were really scared, really, really seriously scared. Um, and I know some of the young kids that we have that worked at the carnival for us uh, were pretty traumatized by the frightening experience. And so we think it's really important that we offer um, counseling of all kinds. You know, uh, I guess it's just group, group gatherings, grief gatherings, uh, uh, an ability to talk um, about their feelings about it either in a group or an individual setting. So we're setting them up. We would also be willing to set them at the different schools. Uh, whatever way seems to fit what people feel comfortable doing. If people wanna to go to Lala and have the counseling or go to Lincoln Alliance, whatever, um, Nightingale, we can do it that way. Or we could do it here at the Boys and Girls Club. We're really willing to set it up any way that would accommodate the community the best and make people feel comfortable. So um, I wanted to let you know that's kind of our next steps and what we're trying to do to, to see how we can make sure that everybody in Lincoln Heights and in the community feel um, you know, more comfortable and not fearful of, of what happened uh, on Sunday. So that's basically where we are. Thank you. And we'll get back to you on the item when we get to the item. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for giving me the time. Yeah. Thank you, Warner. Any public um, announcements? Please raise your hand or press star nine. Sorry. Next, we have 41948. You have two minutes to speak. Hi, everybody. I don't know if you could see me. Uh, my name is Jamie Lisinski. I'm the. We can hear you. I talked to you, it was actually before COVID, and then I left to, the mayor tagged me to manage the COVID testing sites, and I did that for a year and a half, and I'd come back. So I wanted to kind of reintroduce myself. Uh, Chief ben Gene Barczyk and both Chief David Spence, who are my reliefs in Battalion 2, they've retired. I still have another year and a half before I get to leave the job. Um, uh, we've got a brand new fire chief, brand new administration, um, and also just let you know the activity in the whole fire department is up like 200% as far as fire. So um, in our area, uh, it's increased tremendously uh, just outside your boundaries. We're in Radio Hill. We've worked really hard with the park rangers to clean that up, but we still constantly are responding to that Elysian Park area right on the boundary just because of the homeless issue, uh, homeless problem we have there. Um, but other than that, I, I just wanted to re, uh, I guess reintegrate myself into the community. And if anybody has any questions, um, I don't see a chat area, but I was going to put my uh, contact number and email in the chat area. So um, if not, maybe I'll just email it in the... Does anybody have, do I email it to you, Sarah? You could, what is your email? You can just say it out loud. Jamie, Jamie Lisinski. I'm sorry, J-A-I-M-E, or Jaime. It, my mom's Mexican, my dad's Polish, so it always depends what side of the family I am in with, you know? So Jaime Lisinski, L-E-S-I-N-S-K-I, at L-A-C-I-T-Y dot org. So it's just my name spelling. And um, Battalion 2 office, my office is in Eagle Rock. Is there any questions? So is LAFD one Lincoln Heights uh, still? Yeah, your fire station is fire station one, which is the oldest fire station okay. in the fire department. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the oldest by far, by far, not even close. So okay. It's so old that it has a kitchen separate from the fire department because that's where they built it with horses. And then the other one, yeah, was torn down. Now it's the old one. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. I'm going to stay on just listen. I'd like to hear the pulse of what's going on, but I'm going to be trying to do this work. So I'm I'm going to mute out. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. If there is anybody else that would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand or press star nine. Thank you. I do not see any hands raised. Now we're going to go to item number. I think it's item four. 
government reports. So if there are any government officials or elected officials on the line, um, please raise your hand or press star nine. You have two minutes to address the community. We have Cynthia Cruz. You have two minutes to speak. Hi everyone, uh, Cynthia Cruz from Council Member the Leon's office, the field deputy field deputy for El Sereno and Lincoln Heights. Um, just wanted to share a couple of updates. Hello. I think we lost her. We lost Cynthia. I know sometimes she has bad uh, connection. Yeah, I don't see her on the attendee side anymore. Okay. Well, let's see if, if there are any um, government officials or elected public officials on the on the line uh, who want to address the community. Please, please press star nine or raise your hand on Zoom. We have two minutes. Well, we can get back to Cynthia. Sylvia, Cynthia. She's back on. She is? Oh, Cynthia? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Okay, sorry about that. I was getting a call, so I like just exited. Zoom does that sometimes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share a couple of quick um, updates um, with y'all. Um, the, the Department of Transportation's uh, speed hump application is going to be opening up finally uh, after about, I mean, a year and a half maybe that it hasn't opened for new uh, speed hump applications on Thursday, October 6th at 9 a.m. Um, and it's going to close when they receive about 375 applications, roughly about 25 from each council district. So if you guys, um, you know, know any um, folks that are interested in applying, any streets that are have been maybe meaning to get some speed humps, um, please spread the word. It's October 6th um, and the application <clears throat> is going to be online only. But when October 6th comes, if you go to their website, the link will appear so that they can go on there and, and begin the application process for that. So that's on the uh, October 6th. <clears throat> also, I wanted to share that HACLA will be opening their Section 8 housing voucher waiting list lottery applications. Um, so for folks that are interested in Section 8, October 17th, they will be reopening that after five years. Um, and it'll open just from October 17th to about October 30th. Um, and I also have some attachments and flyers that I'll send over to you, Sarah, and to Fernanda, just so you guys can have that for your reference um, on all of, all of this. But <clears throat> that's coming up too. So also please spread the word on that. Um, and our monthly bulky item bin is going to be in Lincoln Heights this weekend, um, 2345 Lincoln Park Avenue for any um, bulky items that um, folks in the area might want to drop off. Um, and we are also again sending our, our cleaning crew area to the Lincoln Heights. Um, location uh, area within CD14. Um, and if you guys don't have any locations that you need us to send them to, email me and I can have our crew go out. We'll do power washing or any anything really, any maintenance stuff. Um, and regarding the tragedy that happened on Sunday, um, it's, it's a huge, unfortunate tragedy. And our office has been in communication with CD1 and um, willing to work with them to support them any way that we can. It's really unfortunate. I know it's been very sad and a lot of people that um, are really just mourning right now. So um, we're here to be a resource and support the community any way that we can. So that, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you.
Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, if, are there any, if there are any other um, government officials or elected public officials on the line, please raise your hand or press star nine to address the community for two minutes. I see Angelica LOA Perez, you have two minutes to speak. Thank you, um, and good good evening to everyone here and, and those who are also joining on the call. My name is Angelica Loa Perez. I'm the director of the Lincoln Heights Youth Art Center. We are with the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. And I, we just, um, myself and a few of our staff are attending tonight's meeting just to be, um, to show our support um, and let everyone know that we are here. I wasn't sure if there would be an opportunity to speak when we do discuss the item regarding the tragedy of last weekend, but um, I figured since I am with the city of LA, I would go ahead and, and make my presence known at this time, but um, we just want to make sure that everyone knows that we are we are absolutely devastated by what's happened. Our youth are precious and we want to make sure to make any type of concerted effort that we can to provide our support and love um, to not only the, the families and the loved ones of the victims, but to the community at large. Um, so I'll, that's all I'll say now and, and maybe later during the discussion if there's an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. I do not see any more hands raised. So now we're gonna move on to uh, our main item here, item five, presentation. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna read it offline. It kind of changed it a little. Okay, uh, so the 9-11-22 Lincoln Heights Broadway Carnival tragedy, community discussion. So we're gonna have a discussion right now. And uh, I wanna bring up, Juana and Angelica as panelists. Um, any uh, events, like any community orgs that are local, right? Yeah, any, really any, uh, any community organization. Let's see. Um, oh, Carlin, if you want to be on too, um, we can make you a panelist. Yeah, if anybody wants to be a panelist is associated with like Boys and Girls Club or the Youth Art Center. Please raise your hand and I'll promote you. Mm -hmm. Is everybody on? So, uh, yeah, so I'm sure everybody's aware about what happened on sa Sunday night. Um, our community is uh, heartbroken and in shock, and uh, the Neighborhood Council is seeking <laughs> services for the children and families of Lincoln Heights after witnessing the incident, and not even witnessing it, but it's a friend of the children here, like or it's somebody who's from here, you know, two people. Um, so uh, we've invited uh, community orgs and Boys and Girls Club to sort of brainstorm about like, we uh, want the community to define like what it needs, you know, instead of it being imposed on us. Uh, Vince, do you want to talk a little about this? Yeah, I mean, first- about I our letter? Say, yeah, I just want to say our condolences go out to the families. Um, this tragedy really shook the community to its core, but it also raised a lot of important issues about guns, um, mental health, and things that our, our council is searching for, right? Because I think today we even have a letter where we want to write, where we can get some of the resources from the city, but also how does a family that's part of our community kind of get back not that we will ever get back on track 100%, but how can we help them get to that point where we have support, both for financial and mental health and really anything to rebuild as much as we can from that. And also for the community members, you know, whether people were there or not, any type of shooting is a, tra a tragic event for anybody. It, 
including in today's time when we're seeing them more often than not, and there's really no resources or any place people can go to have this type of discussion, right? Because it, it, there's just so many emotions running through. And I think the council took the time, the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council took the time to make this platform so we can be able to have that discussion as tough as it is, but also to come together in a time of need for some of our most precious community members that we lost. And I think we have a lot of good hearted people in the community and a lot of good hearted uh, council members here. And so I think this is the best platform that we can do and get a letter out to get not only district 14, but really all districts should have a plan in the event of an incident like this happening, because we're gonna need a lot of uh, not only funding, but ways in we can discuss this openly in public so that we can begin a healing process from it and hopefully prevent these things into the future. So I'll pass it on to uh, Councilwoman Fernanda. Before moving on to discussion, I just wanted to offer a moment of silence for Winfred Lee and Javier Mejia, if that's okay with everybody. I want to thank everybody for being here and for holding that space. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna have a discussion, and I guess we'll uh, begin if wanna. Carlin and um, yeah, you, you could start. You want us? You want us to start, sir? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Start. Okay. Sort of presentation. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, I don't. I, I talked about the carnival and that we set up the carnival and, and that was the intent is a, is a friendly family event for a weekend that's um, like um, an affordable event for families. And we've always seen some families will come and buy two little tickets for their kids because that's what they can afford. Or another family will buy $200 with the tickets. It's amazing. The, um, but it's always been something um, that welcomed everyone. Um, uh, you see people um, um, really enjoying themselves with small kids, uh, with all kinds of different gang backgrounds. Uh, um, there seems to be a truce for the carnival that anyone can come and that it's family time and it's gonna be fine for everyone to come. Um, the teenagers actually seem to be having a very nice evening on Friday night. There were a lot of kids and they were having a very nice time. Um, the progression of, of, of uh, difficult interaction between teens 
escalated, I guess, on Sunday, particularly. So there must have been some on Saturday, but it seemed pretty, uh, from my perspective and from a lot of people's perspective, like it wasn't too much. It was outside of the perimeters of the actual carnival. Um, but of course, it all blends because in the end, these two kids lost their lives on Sunday night. And, um, and so it, it, it involves all of us. It involves all the people who went and it involved all of us who were involved in it. So I guess from our perspective, um, what we're trying to do is see, as I said before, Sarah, what can we do to offer the community, work with the community to uh, see if we can help kids in particular, but anyone really, adults as well, that feel very um, uneasy after this happening to make sure we can, you know, come to grips with what happened and move forward. And that's what we're trying to do. And um, we do not, uh, we have some guidance. We do have a particular gang grant that we have that's from the state of California, but we do not actually have a lot of funding for counseling. So we have uh, been offered some help so that we could do this. And so I guess what we're talking to you about is what would you like to see happen? What would you like to see offered? And how would you like to see it happen? I mean, would you like to see it at schools? Would you like to see it at the Boys and Girls Clubs where kids feel comfortable or both or, you know, what do you as community representatives think would be a good way to, to um, see what we can offer and us be a part of it uh, if you want us to be and, and see what we can um, see what we can mend or we'll see what we can heal. Uh, that's all we can do. We can't undo the very unfortunate thing that happened. I think we need to come up with a plan yeah. so we can not have this happen again, for sure. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, at least try our best to, to, to minimize the gang involvement, the kids get involved, the gang attraction for kids. It's definitely lethal. And the, you know, what age group, I mean, we're, we think about this every day, honestly, at the Boys and Girls Club, we think every day about what age group are these kids beginning to move off that direction? When is it happening? You know, what are the signs of it? We can see the signs. Um, and how do we counter that significantly? Um, there are lots of programs out there and some are good and some are not so good. But um, what can we do despite those and with those to stop or to um, be effective in our efforts to make sure that attraction is less attractive and that we're keeping kids involved in things that are going to be productive and not end up in this tragic way for a 17 year old or any other age. Thank you. And that's about all I have to say. I mean, that, that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> big so agenda. We, we have other, uh, we have the, you know, we have uh, different nonprofits in our community, different re community centers, right? We have the, Boys and Girls Club, we have the Youth Arts Center, right? And then we have other uh, groups. Uh, are we utilizing these spaces as much as we can? You know, there are a lot of questions about, like with gang stuff, it's like a lot of that's intervention stuff, you know, uh, that's after the fact. But what do we have already that we're not using is a big question. Um, we have a lot of spaces like the library basement, you know, like, you know, a lot of space that uh, could enrich the lives of young people can be activated. And so we brought on the Youth Art Center as well. And uh, yeah, if, uh, Angelica, if you want to talk about what you think? Sure. Um, you know, like like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm, I wanted to um, be here to, to listen, most of all, I think it's really important that we listen to the needs of the community um, before imposing on anyone any type of plan that we might think would be a great one. Um, because we know that that services um, 
can make their most maximum impact possible when they're they're coming from the community themselves. So we as a as a youth art center, obviously we we know very very well um, the potential for arts to heal the opportunity that all of the different myriad of form art forms that exist. We know that those are very very powerful transformative healing um, measures and and healing ways. And so we are always going to be an open resource. Our, our doors are always going to be open for all of the youth, not only the youth that have been impacted by this tragedy, um, and also to the community. But we would love to hear kind of like um, what was being said before, how, how is it that the community would like to see us be utilized? Um, so I have some ideas, but I would love to hear what the community would like as a request for our space and actually, um, after a very, very long time of having to be closed, the mayor has lifted this past May for our center to be open. We are in a kind of a precarious situation in that we share our facility with the Department of Recreation and Parks, and we are um, in the middle of creating an MOA and a memorandum of, an, of agreement regarding the uses of our space that um, have been open-ended in, in certain ways. And so we felt that the pandemic would be a uh, time to address those things so that we can move forward in the safest and, and most um, healthy way possible for the community during an ongoing pandemic. But I'm very happy to say that we'll be opening. Um, we are already open um, and we are, we are there more and more each day with staff, starting with staff. We have a lot of things that we're doing internally to get ready, but um, our classes are going to be open to everyone um, October 24th. But I, like I said, um, I would love to hear how other ways that we might be of service. Angelica, where are you? Where are you located? Yeah. We're located at 2911 Altura. So we're on, we're on the corner of, of, Bra of Griffin and Altura Street, one block north of Broadway. Our, our, Actual building used to be a church. There's a, a whole cluster of churches where we're located and we've been open since 2011. So we're still getting discovered by community folks. And um, we have we have a lot, a lot of uh, wonderful families that are involved in our in our classes and have been even during the pandemic, which has been really wonderful. So that's the, the center there with the skate ring. Is that am I correct? That's right. And that is that is where the Department of Recreation and Parks comes in. Yes. They oversee the skating rink. Right. OK, I'm very familiar with it. Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> Carlin also is with Boys and Girls Club. If you say, Hi, Carlin. Hi. Well, I mean, I think hearing from the community members is the most important thing, uh, as everybody's saying. Uh, maybe if everybody isn't comfortable coming on these meetings, uh, maybe we can get find some way to some other way, you know, to get people's input. Is it, was it a, is it an ask for comment on social media? Is it a survey that goes out to all the schools? Um, what do the kids want to see? What do the families want to see? Um, and then and then putting together pieces. So maybe we can. You know, work better together to coordinate with grid intervention, with ourselves, with the arts programs, um, with Lincoln Heights tutorial program. There aren't a whole lot of service providers based in Lincoln Heights. It seems like there are some on the periphery where their priority may or may not be Lincoln Heights because they have to serve a mul you know, multiple areas. So how do we strengthen our organizations that are right in Lincoln Heights that are dedicated primarily um, on the Lincoln Heights community and, and how do we work together, I, I think is you know, one of the important questions um, for me and how to best get the input from the community, um, both now in this meeting, but maybe some other ways as well. Cool. Well, Fernanda, do you wanna take, take the wheel? We're gonna see what uh, the community wants and needs. And so we're gonna to go to the community uh, discussion now. So if there's any community members 
that want to speak, uh, just raise your hand or press star nine. We need to gather we, your input. We have Eli. Hi, how are you? Um, you know what? I've been in this community for many years, over 40 years, and um, like the Boys and Girls Club, do you guys have like any kind of parenting classes? Because you have to start them young. You have to start them at home. Is there any way to have parenting classes that are mandatory for the parents that are sending their children, maybe once a week, an hour a week? Because if you start them young, you know what I mean? I remember when I had my children young, um, you know, when they were going to preschool and kindergarten, we had these mandatory parenting classes, which honestly, as a young mother, it helped me tons. You guys, you know what I mean? You guys are servicing the community, but are you servicing the parents in that way? You know, are you, are you saying that, okay, you guys see the signs of gang. Um, are you making referrals to like Barrio Action where they can work alongside with a social worker if you guys see a fight going on or if you see a, a child displaying, um, you know, those type of likings, you know, sometimes what I see around my neighborhood, it's generations of, of gangs in, in that same family, you know what I mean, where the kids grow up looking up to these older gang members thinking that's a cool thing well maybe you know the parenting classes and teaching them another way of being would really help out because you know the funds come in through through our community you know what I mean that fair that you guys had you know it brought it brought in a good profit for you guys you know and you know the tickets are honestly outrageous for our community you know it's not it's not feasible these you know what I mean you're you're working with, you know, with low income and, you know, you, you need this many tickets. I, I really see it as unfeasible. And, you know, I kind of boycotted them because honestly, you know, the cost, I was like, are you kidding me? You know, each ticket is a dollar, one ride is $5, you know, that's not feasible, but honestly working, you know, at the boys and girls club and maybe seeking out those resources, looking for those parenting classes and having those parents attend those classes as a mandatory, you know, you know, mandatory weekly meeting that might help them, you know, start them off young. I'm sorry if I'm taking up too much time, you guys, I'm kind of busy too. I'm working right now. So I just wanted to say thank you for giving me a few minutes. Thank you for your public comment, Eli. We have um, iPhone. Hello, my name is Francesca and I am um, representing the Northeast Lincoln Tigers. We are a youth nonprofit organization based out of Lincoln Heights. A uh, majority of our football players and cheerleaders were visiting Sunday evenings um, fair. So I was very, um, I wanted to hear what the meeting was about and what resources were going to be provided because a lot of our families were kind of upset. You know, it was a very tragic incident that happened. And um, just hearing about the art center, you know, I wasn't aware of that. I think if you could provide any information on social media that I can provide to my families um, to help open up more, more doors um, for the community of Lincoln Heights, because like you've mentioned, I don't see much for the youth other than the Boys and Girls Club. I know Plaza La Raza has a lot of e events for them too, for the youth or the children. Um, so I just wanted to speak up as far as like a support, anything that our organization can do or shed light on, um, because we do serve a lot of families within the community. Thank you for your comment. May I respond or should I wait until the end? Let's wait until the end. We have Daisy. Hello, uh, I'm Daisy. Um, I wanna say thank you to Fernanda for holding that moment of silence and respect to the two young lives that we lost. Um, also, I've heard good things about the uh, art center right there on Griffin, and I've never been to it. <clears throat> My kids are a little older now. They're like in their late teens. I have one who's uh, 19 and he's on the spectrum. And uh, 
when he was younger, he got rejected by the Boys and Girls Club because of his defiant behavior. And, uh, and uh, I ended up taking my kids to the Boys and Girls Club, the Legion Boys and Girls Club, and they really thrived from that Boys and Girls Club. And I'm forever grateful for that Boys and Girls Club because they do have a lot, they in particular have a lot of resources, I think, that are useful for kids. So I, in reference to the question of what can this Boys and Girls Club do um, to help our community, I think they should reach out to Silesian and see what they're going about, what they're doing to help or to work, or what are they doing to um, work with their community and, and how is it that they're thriving? Because I think that they're doing something positive. Uh, and I say that per, per the own experience that I have. Also in reference to the parenting classes, I've taken parenting with uh, Dr. Rebecca Olgos and she's located in downtown. She's a very, very good uh, psychologist and instructor. I, she deals a lot with Latinos and she, she has both English and Spanish speaking classes. And her method of uh, teaching, her parenting classes are like very in depth. It really shows how, I don't know, it's just, you know, I think she's really good. And I've taken parenting classes at Glendale Community College where the, the instructor talks about how to cope with kids as a, and that method compared to Dr. Olga's. I like Dr. Olga's method because she talks about the root of uh, how we grew up, how we were raised and uh, particular Hispanics and um, how we uh, practice those, those ways of which how we were raised, raising our kids, you know, and, and some of it is okay, but some of it is not healthy, right? Um, so I would really consider her if we're considering like, hey, you know, uh, parenting classes, but yeah, that's all I have. Thank you for comment, Daisy. We have Christina Cabrera. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Christina Cabrera, Executive Director of Healing Urban Barrios. Um, I wanna thank the Neighborhood Council for having such an open discussion. Um, I also want to give um, Juana so much support. Um, I know we have teams and staff and they put on all kinds of events and we hire consultants, this and that, but at the end of the day, as an Executive Director, Juana, I know you're a final signature on a lot of stuff and I can't even imagine what you're going through as that final signature. I, I, yeah, I, I can't even imagine. I know at the end of the day when they're like, hey, Christina, we want to throw on this event. Everything sounds good. Let's have a block party. You know, we bring vendors out. Everything's for the community and a tragedy like this could happen on anyone's watch and to be the ultimate signer of that event and to have such an incident occur, I, I would be in tears. I, so Juana, you, you have my support during this. Um, just as, as, a, as a woman, as a female, as someone just, that just tries to do things right by other people. So yeah, I, I, I only could imagine what you're feeling right now because if it happened on my watch as the final signature of all, I'd be in tears if someone lost a life on my watch. And for, you know, and it, doing intervention, we do it on the, more on the West side. I send my teams out every day into you know, Crossfire. And so I couldn't even imagine. So you have my support right now and it's complete sympathy right now, Wanna, along with the families, because that's a lot to carry on your shoulders. I know. Um, but other than that, I just want to let you know, Healing and Barrios is here. We are in the Lincoln Heights area. We're on Avenue 24, right across the street from the T-Mobile. Um, as we speak, we're, we're already going to start organizing healing circles. We're going to start sending out the flyers, seeing you know, if there's other partners that want to join us as well. Um, I'm still planning. I'm a healing circle facilitator. I've been a facilitator since 2019 with the National Compadres Network. So a lot of it includes like a lot of indigenous practices, considering that, you know, majority of our population in Lincoln Heights is Rasa. So um, it's really getting back to teaching our youth, you know, that we were once warriors, really organizing and fighting for independence, our freedom and our rights as we do today. So definitely uh, we will be having those healing circles coming up very soon. I'll be sending out the flyers. I'll be posting on social media. Um, but really, I just want to say that Healing Roman Barrios is here. I'm native to Lincoln Heights. I was raised on Baldwin. I went to Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
Um, I brought my business back and hopefully very soon I'll have my home there. So I've been there since I was born. So I'm complete native to there. So there's, this is very personal. I was at the carnival on Saturday, Saturday night with my child and her friends from Excel. Um, she had a great time. I've gone every year since pre COVID I've taken my other daughter who went to Excel and I've had to let her wander around with her friends. So and if you have it again next year, Rana, guess what? I'm going to be right there with my kids. Nothing's going to deter me from going to the Lincoln Heights Carnival. There's a bad rap all the time. You know, if you're a Lincoln Heights resident, you're going to hear a lot of it. I don't want to get, I mean, I'm going to be very unfiltered. I don't want to get shot. I don't want to go right there. You're going to hear it. We know the neighborhood we're in and we know the population that's, that's in our neighborhood. So I'm going to be very unfiltered. But at the same time, no one's action is going to deter me from being on Broadway in my neighborhood at that carnival every year. So I will always support that. Um, so next year I will be there and nothing's going to stop me from taking my kids and I will be there again. Um, but other than that, just healing urban barrios is here for the area of Lincoln Heights. Um, it is very personal to me only again too. my daughter tried to go back on Sunday. She was begging her, my, you know, my mom, she was begging my brother, let's go back. Let's go back. Cause she had so much fun. So I want to really recognize too condolences to the family that lost their lives, but so many children have fun there. So many children, that's their Disneyland. That's the one time they get to go on rides and have fun and their smiles and there's laughter. So, you know, it was really unfortunate, a sad event, but we, we, we have to heal and move forward and continue to give this carnival to this community because it is needed for a lot of the children there. And even moments where all of us that do work and have moments where maybe we can't take our kid to Disneyland, but hey, ones if as working parents, we're saving and we can't do the extras this time and you have a little community carnival and you know, this is our moment like, okay, we can splurge a little at the community carnival. Like we do that too for our kids. And so that's also very important to recognize, to recognize for the working parents that have a moment or a weekend where they can't splurge with their kids because maybe they are saving for a rainy day or for something bigger. We don't know what families are going through. But we have to heal all together and move forward. But no one, I 100% support. I can't imagine what you're going through as the ultimate signer. And, but I will see you next year. And I hope you can, I hope the Boys and Girls Club continues to put it on next year and any support from Healing Urban Barrios, you have it 100%. It's all about unity and empowering that Lincoln Heights community as a culture, as families, communities, individuals. And, you know, for, for Healing Urban Barrios, we do service the, you know, the 1824 formerly incarcerated gang involved um, at Promise Youth. I don't like to call them at risk anymore, but they're at Promise because they're at Promise because there is there is a promising future for them if they're guided, you know, and if prevention is there, interventions there as well, too. So a lot of the kids that were roaming around or if they were, were not causing trouble. We know some of them. Um, and it's just a matter of just showing them different ways, you know, and really stepping in and showing up there is different paths of life. We can't prevent everything. It is a human behavior. We can't always respond to that, you know, response of whether, even if it's negative, but we could try to show these kids different light. So we are here for the community and we are here to provide services. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for your comment. Um, if there's anybody else from the community that would like to make a comment, please uh, raise your hand or press star nine. You wanna make a comment about what, you know, if your children were affected from seeing this or what you think your children need or if you're with the schools or any comments, just raise your hand or press star nine. We really wanna hear from the community. I was just gonna maybe maybe start that part of the conversation if that's okay. Um, I, I was there Sunday, well, I was there the whole time, but I was, there with my daughter on Sunday night when it happened and we were in front of CVS. Um, and so we, like many others had to run, you know, to safety. Um, my daughter's 10. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're real concerned about not just, I guess just the array um, and the variety of different experiences people had, you know, anywhere from teens who were 
conducting CPR to try to save their friends' lives, to those who had to run for safety, to those who just heard about it from other people and kind of experienced some secondary trauma. So, um, you know, that's why we're really trying to put together the counseling piece, but also want to work together for coordinated effort with other groups like Christina from here in Healing Art Urban Barrios and Angelica from the Youth Council. Um, you know, so if people have had those different types of experiences, maybe we don't think it's trauma because we didn't actually um, see the gunshots, but it's still pretty traumatic to have had to run for safety or even um, just hearing about all of this and being scared to go out you know, in public and things can really affect the kids. So, you know, please speak up or please reach out and, and take advantage of any of the counseling services we can provide or, or let us know what other things can be done. Thank you, Carly. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the public. If anybody has any comments they would like to share, please raise your hand or press star nine. If not, we will move on to board discussion or any responses that um, the board has for any of the previous public comment. Um, and just a friendly reminder to raise your hand once you want to make a comment um, so that we don't uh, interrupt each other. I do not see any hands up from the attendee side. So I'll go ahead and move on to the board. Before I move on to the board, I did want to provide Angelica the opportunity to respond to, I believe, Daisy's question. Yeah, and Fernanda, we're, we're not on the actionable item yet, so we can just continue the conversation with the, whoever raises their hand on both sides, pretty much. Yeah, sorry. Thank you so much, um, Fernanda and Daisy, and um, I'm so glad that you're here, first of all, um, Daisy, to represent Lincoln High School, and I, we have made many um, presentations at Lincoln when in, in the pre-COVID days. We've, we've been there many times to perform with our Son Jarocho musicians, but you have a large campus, so I'm always actually really happy to hear from someone who doesn't know about us because it's another opportunity to provide information and inform you on our services. So for everyone who may be interested, um, Daisy, you asked for our Instagram handle, please look us up. We are at dca.lhyac. So that's a really long handle, but it stands for Department of Cultural Affairs, Lincoln Heights Youth Art Center. And there is where you will find all the information on our services, our classes, our programming. And I, I did want to um, also piggyback on, on something that you said, Carolyn. Um, and also, um, I believe her name was, I'm so sorry, Cynthia from um, Healing Urban Barrios. Um, we, we also started a very similar effort during the pandemic, and, and this effort was in direct response to the, you know, the devastating losses that our community has been um, dealing with as a collective, and also on very, very personal levels. We ourselves lost our own staff member. She was our right-hand um, superwoman in the office. Her name is Ana Cabrera. I will, uh, Ana Cabrera Cornejo. And, um, and then we had staff members also losing, you know, a parent, a grandparent. And so during the pandemic, we started something new called Community Circle. And it's, it was basically called Como Estamos, How Are We? So it was a bilingual community circle that was started to create an open forum space, just a space just like this for anyone who wanted to um, come and be listened to, be heard and provide resources around whatever theme. At first, it was just very open-ended. It was just a, a space for folks to talk about their loss or their experience with COVID or whatever was going on in their um, mental health space at that time. 
And then we started getting a little bit more structured. We started taking themes from um, community members that were raising, you know, different themes, different things that they wanted to hear about. And so our community circles started responding to themes from the community. And that's when we would bring in guest speakers, um, professionals. And our community circles are already led by our mental health um, professional who also offers yoga. So our yoga expanded into mental health and wellness. So I, I just think that this would be a very natural place, a natural progression for healing circles um, to continue um, and give, give folks around this tragedy space. And as you know, in addition to everything else that is being talked about here tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to Sylvia. Hi. Um, I'm. This is more so a question, and not just to the board, but also to anybody who's been chiming in. Um, uh, as a community and the makeup of this community, some of us don't have access to computer, don't have access to internet don't have access to even the language that we're discussing what can i do as a representative to get all of this information out there to people who need it the most like for example like the fact that we have the boys and girls club offering counseling i think is a huge help to heal a community the same thing with um with what we just had with uh healing urban barrios um but this information I feel can be very helpful to people who also don't have access either because of language or any other resource. And I'd just like to ask overall, what can I do if it's hanging flyers or if there's anything else to be able to get this information out wider spread? So for the Boys and Girls Club, we, we always do our flyers in Spanish, English, Chinese, um, written Chinese. Um, so we can do printed flyers. We have a large um, senior population and family number of families that come to our food bank every week. That's one avenue we can get some information out, um, you know, in, in hard paper form, um, still written form, but, um, and, you know, we're, we're open to other suggestions. If there are businesses that are willing to put the flyer up in their, you know, windows um, or have them on their counters about the counseling and, and other services, of course, that we provide, um, those are some avenues and certainly open to suggestions for others. We've got a couple others. Big Saver Foods allows us to put um, our flyers in their bags for the for the customers um and um we can try to get information that we want to get out that way we also do flyers for the schools we do with every, all the elementary schools um but that depends on the schools having time to give them out but we put them in packets of 30 and we give them because you know all these different things but that that's depend on other people having the time to distribute them for us Big Saver has worked very well, and we're very, you know, if, if that's something that we'd like, the, the council would like to do, we're happy to do that with other resources beyond the Boys and Girls Club as well. Um, so whatever we can do to help. I appreciate the support and people thinking uh, it is hard to have this kind of a thing happen. Um, I'm just hoping that we, can all move forward. No one, no one would ever want to have this kind of thing happen again. None of us. And all we can do is hope that we can work together and and do the best we can to get these kids any one of our services that helps them. You know, for those who are into the arts, which I happen to be, that's my background, <laughs> by the way. Uh, uh, and counseling sports, what it, whatever it takes, you know, that's what we need to do, connect with whatever it takes, um, because they all work for some, at one or the other, they'll work. So that's our job. And I don't mean to take up other time, but um, 
we're willing to do what we can and what you would like to see us do to make this, you know, positive turn for our kids. I'm just sorry, this wasn't to put anybody on the spot. I'm I'm your area one representative, so I'm right at five points. Anything I can do, I'm happy to. If there's any information that we can email Sarah or Fernanda, and if there's any action we can take as representatives to be able to help support you. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. I do see a hand up in the attendee side, Christina. Hi, everyone. Um, to your response, for those that are um, in need of computer time, on Wednesdays, meeting Urban Barrios, um, you can call and make an appointment. So based on availability and use our computers, um, just we have laptops and we put them out for everyone, for the public. And then they could come and they could use computers if needed. And as far as the healing circles, um, part of our planning process, the team's just going to be doing street outreach up and down Broadway and all the different streets daily workmen um, just passing out the flyers. The businesses have always been great with putting our flyers on the on their windows and they're, they're all very welcoming. You know, I love my neighborhood. So um, you'll hopefully with the next couple of days, you'll start seeing the flyers up in businesses, schools. We have the relationships with the schools as well, definitely because a lot of our youth have been previously incarcerated. So um, we work with those youth, so they'll be up at the schools as well. And then, um, but yeah, if anyone needs computer time and needs to borrow a laptop, please feel free to come into the center on Wednesdays. Thank you, Christina. I'm going to move on to Melanie. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, thanks everyone who's here. It really uh, means a lot. Um, I have a couple comments. I um, walked the neighborhood and spoke to um, my neighbors, um, especially ones who I knew were at the carnival um, and asked them what we could do to support them. Um, so uh, my neighbors down the street um, have uh, teenage girls who were present and who lost a friend that night. And um, what they told me is that they would like to feel safe when they leave school. Um, so, you know, while getting to programs and, and having um, these things that are available to them are, are great. Um, I, I think in the immediate, if there's some way for there to be not a police presence, but a community presence for these kids as they're leaving school um, in this interim time, um, that's what they have asked for. And, and these are the kids directly affected um, by, by the tragedy and what happened. Um, these are the kids who were there with them. So um, that's what they're asking for. So I know we're talking a lot about what the community wants. Um, that was a comment that I got. Um, another comment that was made while I was talking with my neighbors is um, expanding their access to safe spaces. And that started a very big conversation about our open spaces. Um, and so I, I hope that this energy that we're bringing here um, to our after school programs, to our community programs, um, that same energy can be brought, you know, in our fights to keep our open spaces available uh, to the youth of our neighborhood, um, such as Flat Top, um, the park, um, et cetera. Um, also, I, I think CD14 is still here. Um, this is more self-serving. This wasn't a comment from the neighborhood, but it, I think it's important that the council finally has um, a physical place to, to meet and to serve the community. And I don't know if CD14 has any resources available to us so that we can finally have some kind of brick and mortar building um, where we can be with our community members um, and provide them with whatever support that, that they need. Um, and also to any community members that are here tonight, first of all, thank you. And second of all, I don't want you to feel like you have to come to the table with any um, ideas or what you think you need. If you just wanna talk about your experience or how you're feeling, um, please feel free to speak up. We're just here to listen. Um, and lastly, if there's any way in the future, um, I love the carnival. I have gone every single year with my children. We were there on Saturday. Um, we had a great time, mostly because we got to spend time with our, our neighbors, our community members, and ran into the business owners and 
just enjoyed the people of Lincoln Heights. I do think if the uh, uh, carnival could be affordable, uh, it would make it more accessible to our immediate community. Um, that, that would be something I'd love to see in the future um, so we can get more people uh, participating uh, in it. Th thanks for your time, everyone. Thank you, Melanie. Um, I do see another hand up on the attendee side, Daisy. Hi, I just really want, hello? Hey. Okay. Uh, I really just <clears throat> quickly want to say, I don't know if this is something that the Boys and Girls Club does, but I, I do agree with one of the previous attendees who said that the tickets, that the prices there at the fair were <clears throat> a little expensive. They were, because I walked by and I saw, um, I was, I was uh, looking at the food. So I took a walk on Saturday night and I did see that some things were like somewhat overpriced. So in reference to that and you know having heard that there are like families that do buy a lot of tickets and like some that just buy like one or two i don't know if you guys i'm so sorry daisy you cut off did we lose her i think we did I see her again. Just to clarify the price of the tickets, um, all okay, of that is okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so like I'm like thinking maybe next year if this uh, event is put on again. Can, can you guys like or do you guys sponsor have parents or families like something that helps sponsor tickets? you guys could pass out to those that are of uh you know that cannot afford to buy more than two that's just food for thought i don't know an idea i don't know if you guys heard me <laughs> you did Thank you so much, Daisy. do you want me to re respond to that uh, not right now mm -hmm. okay um hi daisy and um uh, melanie and others who um it, the price of the tickets is of concern it's of concern to us as well we have no control of it what we do is we we um contract with this uh company that puts on the carnival um and and then we provide just some of the accessories like uh we don't do the security anymore they handle the security because uh, they needed they had quite a bit of a security there, but they handle that and they handle most of the things. We we just handle the cleanup afterwards and a few of the things that um, that uh, the the all of the parking, the um, the city uh, uh, traffic control and all that we 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 have to, we pay for that. So um, the only thing that we could do is do something where we. We have sponsored a lot of the kids like from the boys and girls clubs and things like that um, um, and work on that for reducing costs um, and try to pursue sponsorships that would help pay for half of the uh, or a portion of the tickets in that manner. But we we just have no control over the, the carnival is quite expensive. It is not a real big fundraiser as everybody seems to think. Um, but it is such a good community event. We've gone ahead and done it, even though the cost for us is much more than what, you know, the profit is very mi minimal to be quite honest. Even though everybody thinks that we make a lot of money, the carnival owners make a lot of money. <laughs> we don't make the money. <laughs> Hate to be so honest about it, but it's a lot of costs in putting on that carnival. Thank you. We have another member from the public, Eli. Okay. Um, so I I heard that you mentioned that you reached out to the city for the street closures and traffic control and all of that. Right. Um, you also reach out um, to Hall and Back or to the city to request, um, you know what I mean, more patrolling because maybe, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people are against, you know what I mean? Um, you know, seeing, you know, 
police officers around or, or a high volume of police officers. But, you know, hey, sometimes just for the safety of our families, that's what needs to be present. You know what I mean? I, you know, I passed by there and, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was a high volume of police presence once the incident happened, you know. But, you know what I mean? It would have been nice to have, you know, officers walking up and down, you know what I mean? A few squads on the corner. That's what I had seen before because I know I've been to the ones from Sacred Heart. And I know that, you know, you know, the presence is always there when, you know, when Sacred Heart closes, closes off the street. So did, was that something that you did during the time that you contacted the city? Yes, we've, we've, we have had a variety of support from Hollenbeck. One year, of course, we had the whole unit was there with the truck and everything, uh, but they've cut that back. Um, so the amount of police presence to me was very minimal at this, to be quite honest. And um, I think I would like to see that as well. Uh, the carnival itself hires a, a lot of security. I think you saw them in their black shirts, um, but I think that we need to work on increasing the police presence, especially since we did have this event. I think that we would like to see more of that ourselves. I'd like to move on to Melanie. I don't know. That was a mistake. I, I must have not have lowered it. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, Sylvia Lara. Hi. Um, I I agree that. Sorry, I'm trying to be, be a little bit careful here. Um, if there is some sort of conversation with the police presence and what the community expects, I agree that that can help. Personally, with the Hollenbeck Department, uh, not only myself as a resident of Lincoln Heights have had experiences where they are not um, um, aware or empathetic enough towards our community. So I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to provide an environment where we can have the fun that Lincoln Heights has experienced with this event. Um, and that's not just of a personal experience, that's of friends that have also experienced this as well. Um, and friends that were at that carnival and witnessed the aggression and the ego on part of the Hollenbeck department in response to this when people are grieving. So if there's some sort of conversation with this department on what to expect and what empathy level we require of them, I agree that that can be helpful, but otherwise I'm not sure that it necessarily helps. Thank you for that, Sylvia. Um, next we have Sarah. Hi. I have a little list that I made here. So, um, you know, I saw the video and the time span it took for the um, ambulance to get to the, the victim on uh, Broadway. And it was almost like 20 minutes or longer. And the people who were trying to do CPR on him, his friends were gonna put him in a car and take him to the hospital themselves. And they didn't because they, they were told to get away. And uh, they were living with a, the feeling that if they would have done that, they would have saved their friend. Um, I feel that it should be mandatory. I'm like, I don't think the police would have made any difference in this. It might've made it worse. I've seen the most recent critical incident, incident videos that have happened in Lincoln Heights of use of force, of shooting into like oncoming traffic and stuff like that. It would, probably would have made it worse. But um, it should be mandatory that there's an EMT on site. And usually we have, LA Fire Department number one, they're the paramedics that serve our community, like first responders, right? So I'm so vexed as to why it took so long, why these kids were on the sidewalk for so long, just laying there. Um, not one uh, medic there. And that should be like, besides the po police conversation, that should be like one of the most important things, right? You have rides where kids could fall out, whatever. Um, 
suggestion. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, suggestion. Um, do, 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 do. Now this is such like a, 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 um, a recent, it's such a big trauma, right? I feel that there should be like a drop-in center on Broadway, like almost like a truck. Oh, that's like emergency counseling or something where people can just go and talk because like a lot of the business owners are crying in their shops and like nervous and it's, it's like they're reliving it right um the county you know hilda solis uh it's like time is so, such an issue here right um it's almost like uh like a jenny sportswear they should just open it up and put like a counselor in there and have a sign like please come in and talk or something uh I just uh, don't, you know, we need we need to get the counseling going like in the next week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's it. I mean, talk about other things, but uh, uh, yeah, just um, and look, Boys and Girls Club. It's like I'm concerned about the future. Frankly, I'll be I'll be frank. I'm concerned about the future of Boys and Girls Club. And one of the biggest things, it's, it's, it's such an um, important community space historically, right? Since 1942, the Times Boys Club. And, you know, the uh, building, like, you know, there's a lot of things like the pools are not functioning. There's Prop K funds that aren't matched, you know, stuff like that. And it's shrinking and shrinking, right? But the, the services are, could, like, if that whole building was utilized for a community, it would just be like, so beneficial and like uh it's just like that's the way it has to be and i really feel that the board of the boys and girls club needs to be diversified and it needs to have community members on it um if there is to be you know for the future because uh just looking objectively we're really at the brink right now and uh it could be such a wonderful powerful thing uh for the youth like it always was right and i think another thing is Historically, it was run, you know, there was a lot of volunteers, like the Wolsey brothers, and the, they had a wood shop in the basement, all kinds of stuff, an arcade. Uh, if we can get volunteers and really uh, amp it up so it doesn't have to be rented out, uh, really, uh, we want to help Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and I'm, I guess we, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Lincoln Heights wants Boys and Girls Club to be like the shining star it is like in people's, you know, their grandparents have in their minds and stuff. Uh, and we can do it. Um, but uh, that's another conversation. But I think that th th this uh, dialogue that we're having really uh, opens it up, you know, like, wow. yeah, the community is kind of thinking about the resources that it has already and how to utilize them. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it makes me happy that we're having this conversation. Yeah, that's all I have. Uh, Sarah, that's wonderful. We'd love to have us be the shining star. We'd love to have our pool open. You know, we we just redid the ceiling in the pool. It's um, it's a pool that is um takes a lot of money to redo because it's built in 1950. The building is in 1950. We've got people that say it's ugly and we need to tear it down, and we keep saying. Well, we don't think it's ugly. We think it's really a wonderful part of the history of Lincoln Heights. And uh, we fight that battle. We fight the battle with developers that come all the time and see this wonderful big piece of land where they could put a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, I don't know if I should be mentioning that, but it's an ongoing battle because it's one of the few pieces, large pieces of, of land left. And we keep that baseball field and <laughs> We've worked really hard to make sure that it remains a special place for the kids of Lincoln Heights. And uh, that being said, it is also a very old and costly building to keep up. So when you mentioned the Prop K money, which is right, if we could get some more funding, we've been working on that um, to redo the pool we got a wonderful place for kids because that pool is the most popular part of the whole boy. And it's so wonderful to see the kids swimming in that pool. So I really appreciate what you have to say. I totally agree with you. Um, I we would, we would be so happy to be able to have it 
at full capacity for the resources as a resource for this community. And so um, uh, we look forward to working with you to make sure we can make that happen. I just want to tell everybody, yeah, the Boys and Girls Club, the Times Boys Club, that was built by the LA Times after the Zoot Suit Riots. It's sort of like an apology, or that's what I've been told by a lot of older people in the community. Um, but that building is a historic, uh, you know, it, it's not, I don't think it has HCM status or it's on the National Historic Register, but it's eligible being on the uh, natural, National Historic Register. And I know that that, that that can be problematic, right? Like, I mean, on one hand, like a developer won't want to touch it if it has HCM status, but then it could be hard for the Boys and Girls Club if they want to renovate it and update it, right? Just like how it is with Lincoln High School. Now, uh, the, uh, the community can come together and help get historic status for it. And in that case, there are uh, different funds that are available for renovation too. Um, I don't know if Mills Act is one of them, but in any case, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's such a, a historic thing in people's memories and lives. Right? It is. It is. More people have said, I almost died in the pool, <laughs> I almost drowned in the pool, and they say, I almost cut my finger off in the shop. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> they also say, the boys and girls saved my life. That's the most common. And I learned to swim in that pool. Those are the most common comments. <laughs> they are, they are. Yeah, stories too. <laughs> so really, we appreciate, we appreciate what you're saying because we're threatened all the time. You know, we're threatened all the time because um, there are a lot of sharks out there, you guys. <laughs> there really are. So Great. just to let you know. All we're, right, I'd like, I'm sorry, goodbye. I'm fine. I'm I'm done. I just want you to know that the, you know, we would really love your help. I'd like to move on to Chenta. Hi everyone. So I'm listening to all this stuff, and I'm the treasurer to the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council, and also a scared chair to the outreach now because of what happened, and how in the future we're going to tackle to try to do our best to not have an incident happen, right? But, you know, I go back so far into Echo Park in history, you know, um, and just doing events that I go back to a time when, yeah, you, you were always worried about some type of altercation in the community. And we used to hold a lot of the fishing derbies in Echo Park, which we had hooks, sinkers, you know, it was the worst combination of thing to have with kids, right? But it was also the best thing to have with them. What I see today, is yeah, there's a lot of sharks in the water. Um, you know, we have a lot of our, our public resources that are being privatized, right? That's another huge problem in our community because the one thing I know that our kids needed and what made successful projects both at the city, state and national level was resources like parks, buildings and money to fund it, right? And that's what's been pulled back. If you don't do a certain thing, or there's a certain um, form you have to follow as a nonprofit, you don't get funding if you do good projects. And one of the projects that I was involved with was called the Los Tiburones Youth Fishing Club that was run by the California Department of Fish and Game at the time that was targeting uh, predominantly Latino communities to introduce them into sport fishing. And that was such a huge hit with such a little amount of money. But one of the, the key things that I seen with the state is the state didn't want to get involved in the city. So they basically handed a, a blank check to us and said, hey, you guys go in there and deal with the people. Just make sure that they understand fishing licenses and that they're gonna become part of the revenue stream for the future because Latinos would be the future majority in the state of California. And so usually, you know, what I learned back then was like, oh, it's all about the money then. So you're just gonna market us and throw us off the wagon, even though the project worked. Most of our kids graduated high school, which was crazy, right? Not only that, we were dealing at the time when they used to term at-risk youth kids, or they used to tell us the throwaway kids, which none of them were. Two of the kids that we had in there became biologists and one became a lawyer. And that broke the cycle that we're talking about for generational gangs with simple exposure to an outside world with opportunities, real, real world opportunities, working with biologists, working with every issue that they could imagine in their community, but exposing them. 
nowadays that comes at a premium and you know with the small budgets that people work with today far too often we see like a bunch of nonprofits have these huge salaries right crazy salaries i've been looking at them and they're just outrageous and really taking away what a nonprofit is for a community to provide services that are much needed for the youth because they need time we have a situation right now even in one of our baseball diamonds in lincoln park where the Dodger Corporation took over the thing. Now our kids don't have nowhere to play baseball. They have to wait for it to be open, get permission. So that resource is important to a group of kids that just wants to go out on a summer night instead of going to the streets, looking for mischief sometimes. And sometimes mischief finds them and they have nowhere to go. So like Boys and Girls Club, I remember throughout you know years, they were they had good funding at one point in Echo Park, we used to do a lot of projects and then it all dwindled away slowly. And I think those are some of the things that we need to tackle with our new incoming, especially in District 1 with Unices, is to really make a highlight on, on the, the need for funding for real good community projects. Not the traditional stuff that we're seeing today, not that it's bad, but they need opportunities. They need exposure to the real world, uh, uh, how it works. Far too often we shelter it or we politicize it, right? We gotta be politically correct when we're talking about the issue. When in reality, it's very simple. If you don't got the money, the kids don't have the opportunities. How do they utilize that money? Is it really going to a project that, that it's enlightening them in a way that it's exposing them to whether it's sport fishing or you know, maybe art or something bigger than what we have in our community that would make them grow and make it interesting for them, entrepreneurship. And that it's tragic. Because I've seen the, the escalation of our kids go back. All the work that we did in the early 2000s, where we were getting a lot of progress and kids wanting to do sport fishing, they wanted to learn science. Science turned into hydrology and all the fields. All of a sudden, this project was so good and it went away. And we used to do derbies here in Lincoln, in Lincoln Heights that had a group here too. And that was tragic to see those types of things go away. So I really think that we need to focus on these type of venues, but also create, um, I, I was just in a meeting on the nationwide talk about the violence that's been happening with guns in the US. And one of the tragic things that came out of it from sociologists and psychologists was that these are, they may be the norms, we don't want them to be, but they're happening so often that they're almost unpreventable to some degree. And the question is if we, add more resources for kids programming, can that somehow lighten that, right? But when we, when we see in Uvalde and a lot of the other issues that are happening, that's our backyard. It happened in Lincoln Heights. We're now part of the national um, number of shootings now, right? And we've been here. So to some of us that lived in the city, we grew up with that. I grew up in Echo Park in the 80s. So that lets you know pretty much gunshots were a norm for us. And that's something that as, as we start these projects, we need to discuss and build a foundation from them because I think the city and the funders lost a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of stuff that's happening in the city that's just repeating itself again. All this stuff is resurfacing the violence. And it's because we don't have a lot of stuff for kids. Things are shut down. And there has to be quality edge uh, stuff. Because our kids, like I tell them, when they used to tell me you're wasting time with them, I used to say, our kids are as good as anybody else's kids given the opportunity. And we prove that. They can be doctors, they can be lawyers, but they need the chance and the opportunity. And we don't have those opportunities in our community. And I think as nonprofits, that's something that, that people should focus on. Like our, in our council, we just purchased speakers. We purchased a screen. We, uh, we need to get a projector so that we can have some type of like a movie night and not just one a month when our elected official comes out, right? We wanna make them so that we can have them anywhere or whether it's a, a, an education, a documentary on maybe gentrification, which is another trauma our community's facing. So we're hoping that with everyone, we can unite together since most of you have locations where we can probably set some of these things up and to bring those resources to them. After all, it was bought by public money, it's theirs. It's for their use, their education. And I think that as a community, that unity is gonna be very important because sometimes we're the only ones left on the front line. Most of the people have left us behind and we can tell that by the situations we're in. And sometimes we have to pick that up and be responsible. And some of us are in positions to do that. 
And I'm hoping that after this talk, not only do we unify on the issue of finding out what we need for our community on a mental health issue immediately now, since we're dealing with the tragedy, but also what the long-term goals are so that we can start setting these and start making our community efficient. And hopefully it takes on citywide that other, other neighborhood councils and other city councils can take on this project because it's tragic. We have to wake up. There's no excuse to turn back. That's just my personal opinion. I've been fighting forward all this time, but I see people slip back sometimes into the norm. We cannot accept it no more. These are our children and these are our future. And we have to treat it that way. Thank you. Thank you, Chante. We have Esmeralda. We can't, we can't really hear you. There's a lot of buzzing. Oh, buzzing. Oh, I don't know. Is it better now? No. It's feedback. Do you have earphones on? Yeah. No, I can't hear you. Oh. Is it okay to just mention why we're getting her on? We, we did a deep sea fishing trip uh, last weekend. Um, yes, and we caught mahi mahi like crazy. Our kids and families went. Um, it was really nice, but we don't do it nearly enough. <laughs> Okay, cool. I was on that trip too. Got to be there to make it happen. <laughs> it was great. Okay. Oh, well, maybe we'll go to Gil and then we'll move on to the action item. See if all the other stuff. Gilbert? Gil? Go. Okay. I just hand down. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me now? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, I've been listening to everybody, and uh, as you all know, I, I'm I'm not from Lincoln Heights. I uh, I came here seven years ago to help my son up out in his business, and uh, he's he was living in Glendale at the time, and then he's moved on, and uh, the business has moved on. But uh, I came here uh, and was looking around in the city, and uh, I was a, a, I was really appalled. Uh, I come from San Pedro. Uh, I was a football, basketball, and baseball coach for 25 years in San Pedro. Very proud of it. And uh, we went to the World Series in uh, in '89. Uh, my oldest, uh, youngest son, rather, uh, was not that athletic, so I got involved in in scouting, and I have been in scouting and still am in scouting for over 30 years. Now, uh, I was saying that, you know, you have no little league field, you don't have any, any baseball stuff going on, you don't have basketball leagues, you don't have scouting, you have none of that stuff in Lincoln Heights. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, I'd love to, uh, I would have, you know, aside from the pandemic, uh, I was gonna try and get something go. I'm on the council level of, of the Boy Scouts, so, I, I know a lot of people I can get scouting uh, started in, uh, in, in Lincoln Heights. Uh, but uh, when, when the kids are involved in sports, uh, it was our, it was our, uh, is our family. Uh, they, uh, they have a lot of, they have time to do, they have to be out on the field and everything else all the time. They don't have time for this other stuff. And, and I have heard of course that, uh, so, so a lot of the kids in the, in the Lincoln Heights and on the East side, uh, the gangs are, are like their family. They, they they take care of them and everything else like that. Well, that's uh, we've got as as Lincoln Heights as a family has to take care of their children, and that is provide them with 
activities and everything else that, 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 that are wholesome and keep them busy and everything else. Uh, but uh, I, I, I said I was, I was really astounded that, that they, they had nothing like that in Lincoln Heights and boy, yeah, they sure could use it. Thank you, Gil. I'm gonna go back to Esmeralda. <laughs> um, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Um, I agree that um, we need more outreach for the teens and preteens. A lot of activities are age restricted with 11 or 12 being the oldest and it leaves teenagers out to twiddle their thumbs or get in trouble. I know that's what I did because I didn't have support at home. So if um, we can at least provide for kids who have nothing to do or need support from, like if they're not getting anything from at home, like neglect and stuff, the community is there for them. And just placing more resources for the teenagers. And um, that's all I had to say. Thank you, Esmeralda. And we have Angelica. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just, I've been taking some notes. I think it's been a really fruitful and productive conversation. And I'm just um, really very fortunate to be a part of this conversation. Um, we are here to move forward in this spirit of, of unity and getting together really in, in um, service of our, of our neighbors, of our children, of our families, of our parents. Um, and but especially of our teenagers, how you just brought up Esmeralda. So I just wanted to um, say a few things in, in terms of how just off the top of my head tonight, um, we, we could be uh, uh, an active participant in this healing and as, as partners to the community. So um, I know that Juana, you were mentioning and others uh, were mentioning before about flyers and circulating them. And thank you, Sylvia, because you raised a really important point that we learned um, years ago that printed flyers are still absolutely necessary. And so I wanted to offer for um, this Saturday, we were we are gonna be tabling at the wall um, Las Memorias Healthy Neighborhoods Resource Fair and Movie Night. So we are more than happy to run off copies of the post that you shared, unless there's another, um, any other, any flyer basically that that you have already around the counseling services that are that are being organized um, by the Boys and Girls Club or by anyone, we can absolutely run off those flyers and add them to the giveaway packets that we have ready to go out to the community this Saturday. And if there's anything else that anyone would like to share, you can just email it to me. Um, we also shared the post this morning, Juana, um, about the counseling services that are being organized. So any anything that does take place on social media, you can count on us as a partner to get that information out on our Instagram platform as well. Um, men, other um, different folks have mentioned the spaces. We need spaces that are open for our communities and families in Lincoln Heights. Please count us in as a physical location that can be utilized in this way, whether it's for those healing circles that um, Juana at the beginning of the meeting you mentioned, you know, taking them, whether it be to schools or nonprofit organizations, you can put us on the list as one of those locations if that's something that would be amenable to you all and the families. Um, I would be so happy to work with, with you, Christina, with Healing Urban Barrios. I believe right before the pandemic, one of your folks came through our center. We were very happy to meet you and, um, and work with you, but we would love to still do any of that, whether it be we could be a source for the type of workshops and healing circles that you run, or we could bring you in to the community circles. It's just about you you know, unifying our efforts. And um, on a citywide level, I wanted to mention that there are a few more Proposition K facilities that are in the pipeline. It does seem um, everything that you're saying, Chente is resonating a lot and others in terms of what's up with the city. You know, we, I know that I can speak for ourselves. Our, our budget is not what it should be. Our Department of Cultural Affairs budget is tremendously lacking. 
And we have to constantly push and advocate for ourselves that we need this funding because we are on the front lines with our youth, with our families, and we want to do preventative measures so that they, you know, we don't need more policing in the streets. We would, we want them to be productive and, you know, tapping into their human potential, whether it be as artists or not as artists. We believe everyone is an artist at our art center, and that is only one avenue. But um, so I wanted to share that, that there are other Proposition K um, facilities in the pipeline. We are also at the table for funding for high quality um, programming dollars for that are that are you know being circulated and being sought after right now for the 2028 Olympics coming to our city. We believe that we should be at the table for those conversations, even though we don't offer sports and recreation. It is about um all around services and the department absolutely is going to be a part of that conversation so there will be more funding for um high quality programming um due to that due to that source and there's also going to be a, a, a citywide rfp that goes out by the department of cultural affairs to respond also to um, mental health services this came after our community. We we offer community circles just for the Lincoln Heights community, but during the pandemic, we've been completely open um, because we've been virtual. But this is an opportunity for citywide funding, and it will. They are working on the RFP now. It should be coming out within, um, hopefully, by the end of the year. I'm not sure that's not my um, division, but I, I was at a meeting and I got this information from one of our, from our assistant general manager actually, so that programming um, um, around mental health and healing can, can be administered citywide in programs in partnership with the Department of Cultural Affairs. So um, I'm more than happy to connect with you all or anyone who um, would like that afterwards. My email address is my name, which is angelica.loa, that's spelled L-O-A, dot Perez, that's P-E-R-E-Z, at lacity.org. So, um, and you know, you can also find us on Instagram, but I'm just really honored and eager to be a part of this, the actions that need to take place after discussions like these. Thank you, Angelica. Thank I think we could have invited Parks and Rec, but they're, you know, we've tried to engage with them on so many times. But yeah, like the Prop K funds, right? I, I just want to make this quick, but like the roller hockey rink, that was a $3 million roller hockey rink. And we're seeing, be, seeing it being rented out to a roller derby, a roller derby club, a private roller derby, derby club, instead of serving our community. It's always locked up, right? Yes. Maybe roller hockey is not as popular as it was in 2011, right? Um, but then also uh, the Dutch Dreamfields and uh, somebody sent me a video last week from Lincoln Park of a woman doing javelin practice in the Dodgers dream field, like they were running it out. There, there, there are two of them and they're permanently locked at Lincoln Park. And it's just wow. like, and then the, the parks and rec behind the 99 cent store has been under construction and they're putting all this concrete they're making these soccer fields that have AstroTurf that are permanently locked, like at Albion. It's uh, ridiculous, uh, yeah. these so-called green spaces, right? So it's a big thing. Uh, yeah, the Prop K stuff. Yeah, super important. Because they can just also disappear and you forget about what it actually paid for. To serve exactly. The you know? We're, we're dealing with that. Um in terms of our facility, but it is, um, it, it, it's a challenge, um, but we are here um, I, and I cannot speak to the Department of Recreation and Parks. That's not my department, but we a, a hundred and million percent agree. We hate seeing any part of our facility empty and we sometimes wish we could just program it, but it's anyway, um, that is being actively worked on. Thank you, Angelica. All right, so maybe uh, move on to just the letter and then, yeah, we'll move on to the next item. Um, All right, uh, so 
Before I present the motion, I did just have a really quick comment. A motion on this. Oh, okay, because I saw that the agenda item is discussion and possible action on the letter. Oh, I see. So we're gonna that that'll be mm -hmm. the right now. So just that we have a letter. Should I just move on to that? Because I just want to hurry uh, expedite the time. Uh, so uh, the action item is a uh, discussion, possible action on letter to CD1, city, o, city attorney, city council, seeking supportive services for the community of Lincoln Heights. Now, we could add CD14, even though the carnival wasn't in CD14, I think we should add CD14. Technically, the city of LA says we're not allowed to write to uh, county level people, like Hilda Solis, but Vince, could we add some... Uh, County or state level officials or anybody? Well, we could. Uh, we could. Well, we uh, like the county. They, they don't. They don't allow us. But in this situation, I think we should write. It should go to all the council district members. Mm -hmm. It should also go to all the county supervisors. Okay. And it should also go to the governor. Anybody that that has an issue. This is like I said. It's a nationwide um, issue mm -hmm. on gun violence. And so this is this has to go up. The city will not fight us on this one. So we'll go to Jimmy Gomez, Hilda Solis, Wendy Carrillo. Correct. Any anybody that should be on there, and that we need basically a system to be built up with funding, so that in the event of something like this happening, we can go to our local nonprofits and say, look, this is an emergency fund. We need to rent a space. We need to get a psychologist, even a sociologist and really sit down and have the discussion on how we have a protocol to address these issues. Like I said, nationally, you know, the downside of what they're saying, which I hope they're wrong, is that this is a norm. You know, I don't accept that because I know as, as human beings, we're better than that. But again, we have to wait and see how this is gonna play out. But okay. in the meantime, we need those resources. So this, this is an action item. So I make the motion or Vince, you want to, who wants to move the letter? And I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion to accept the letter to send it to the uh, city council, LA County supervisors, the governor, any agency that has any type of jurisdiction or funding within our our city of Los Angeles. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank okay. uh, you. And so, uh, board member discussion. We have Jared. Thank you, Fernanda. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously in in support of the letter. I uh, would. I'm just curious. Uh, perhaps the my fellow board members can just enlighten me. Why is it that this that the neighborhood council? Oh, the other caveat here is I haven't yet finished all the required trainings. Um, so I am curious as to why the neighborhood council cannot write letters beyond the city level. Um, Jose Galdemez is on here. We could ask. The, 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 the fast and easy reason why they don't let us, we're only in an advisory position and our advisory is to the city, not to state agencies or, or county agencies. But, but Lincoln Heights is in, um, I won't say we don't follow the rules, but the community's outcry is more important. And we do have something that's imp important is our fiduciary duties um, require us to, to address the health, safety and welfare of our public and sometimes that means crossing these lines by contacting agencies because the city, I'll say it, is not doing their job. But if Galdivis wants to add into it. Uh, good evening, uh, this is Jose Galdivis with the Department of Labor Department. Uh, so that's my recommendation for the letter to be addressed towards the city, the city council offices, the, the mayor, uh, since, uh, the neighborhood council is an advisory body to the city, uh, and it's only the mayor and city that are able to speak on behalf uh, of the city of Los Angeles. Um, that's why just that that's the recommendation uh, that is provided for for the neighborhood councils when addressing uh, such letters. Advice. Thank you. Thank you. We have Selena. Hi everyone. Um, I just kind of wanted to add, and I don't know if anyone else has thought of this, but 
I think it would be a good idea to also apply pressure in asking for the public's help and for our city council members help in finding and locating the person responsible for shooting. Um, I feel like when situations like this happen, and I say this as a community member and as someone who's been personally, personally affected by gun violence, as a teenager, as an adult, when things like this have happened, they'll, you know, it'll be like in the news and they'll report that someone was killed, but nobody really applies pressure and follows through with asking for help and, and finding who did this, whether gang related or not, the person responsible should be held accountable. Thank you, Selena. Uh, any other board member discussion on the letter? Okay, so we'll go to uh, any uh, attendees. Do anybody from the community have uh, any comments on uh, the letter of what, you know, their opinion? Uh, please press star nine or raise, raise your hand if you're on Zoom. I think the letter is a wonderful idea. Yeah, I was just gonna say thank you for writing it. I mean, I think um, we need that. We need some pressure for the city to fund programs and needs in Lincoln Heights. I think I mentioned this before, but many of the service providers that are supposed to be serving Lincoln Heights are outside organizations and the, and the organizations inside Lincoln Heights are not funded. Um, and so I think you know, we support your letter and um, really appreciate it. Absolutely, it's a really good letter. Um, uh, we can add stuff to it too. I, it's unfortunate CD1 is not present on the meeting. They were invited. This did happen in CD1 and it's unfortunate. I'm sure you feel like I do. I feel like we're waiting for the new person to come in and we are totally abandoned as we've always been by CD1. And here we are <laughs> with one of the most tragic things that's happened. I hate to tell them so bad, but that's the way I feel. And this needs to go to CD1, even though they're on their way out, they're still in. So I think moving forward, we'll have support, but this is happening now and we need this the support from them now. I don't know how we get it. You have to pressure through going through the whole council or what, but I, I believe we should send this letter to and I also would like to see it going to Jimmy Gomez, like you suggested, and Winnie Carew, like all of them. Yes. It's not that, you know, CD1 has a job to do. They're paid. That's what they were elected for, to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the people, right? So it's not a, a, an option to ignore this. So that's why it says the end. <laughs> we have Angelica. Thank you. Yes, I just I also wanted to lend um, our support of the letter. Um, I think that it's absolutely I don't think it's an option. I think it needs to be sent. And I wanted to ask the reason I rose my hand was to ask why um, CD 14. I mean, I'm sorry, CD one is not mentioned. As you said, Sarah, this this did take place in CD one. And I think that should be front and center. And I think that, um, you know, I've written many letters on behalf of the department in the past and we send letters that are of this um, nature of this weighty importance to not only the mayor and the council offices that are that are affected but to the entire city council members so that would be my um, um i don't want i don't know if i can make a recommendation but that would be my my thoughts on that to have this letter go out not only to council districts one and 14 as well as the representatives of the mayor's office but all 14 districts because lives lost in the city regardless of what council district um they take place in our lives our lives lost so we need to unify also as a city and say this this cannot happen this is already you know, two lives is too many lives. And we know this type of violence um, is ongoing and, but we, we need to make 
very loud and clear that this is unacceptable and we need help. And that's the other thing I wanted to add is um, what's happening to identify the the gun per you know the person who the person who did this. And I think that um, if it's not already here, I think that should also be mentioned and addressed. Yeah. The the the, the uh, LAPD released the uh, image that they have last night. They released it to the press uh, of the uh, assailant. Um, it's a very grainy video from CVS. So the incident occurred in front of CVS. You can't see who it is. It was a person on a bicycle. Um, that's what what it says. Uh, in my opinion, the mayor should have come to Lincoln Heights and been like, "Hey guys, I'm here." you know whenever a tragedy like this occurs and nobody's come to to us you know so uh, uh but uh sorry i'm talking into public comment uh are there any other attendees with a comment uh please press star nine to raise your hand or star nine if you're on the phone or raise your hand if you're on zoom all right well, we, we'll go back to mel mel Hey, um, I don't think someone said this. If so, I, I'm really sorry. Um, but the part about um, providing mental health services to anyone who is a witness, um, can can that be more broad? Okay, so we could change that, that wording on there. Right. So we have the first and second, we have the comments. So I guess we'll move on for a vote for the letter, correct? Correct. Just with the add-ons that uh, Melanie had, that we make the statement broad, maybe the state, uh, like the public, anybody in the public. So if we can just add that on, because Mel Mel wanted that added on to just broaden it. I agree. So yeah. it it's a it's a motion with the amendments. Okay. We have two more board member comments. Benny Mavena. Um, yeah, I just, um, I'm not clear on whether I know there was some dialogue as far as like who it's going out to, but is it going out to beyond the city level? Cause that, that, I would like that to happen to, for folks in the County, like the supervisors. Vince, could we could do a sign on letter? Do we do what? Like a sign on letter with community orgs backing us, backing our letter? You could do a sheet in the background with their logos, just uh, like uh, co-sponsored co in the back, but that the letter should just come out straight forward from the council with support okay. from like the Boys and Girls Clubs of Lincoln Heights or, and they can add on a letter to it. We're in support of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council's motion for letter for uh, support, funding for the family. Okay. So they, 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 we can send it in a packet, but to answer Benny's uh, question, Benny, we are going to send it to everybody. This is just too important to just stick within city policy and the red tape. So this will go to every and anybody within the state of California, including our county supervisors, the city of Los Angeles, Wendy Carrillo, Jimmy Gomez. So anybody that will listen to us, this is something that's bigger and we can't keep it in the city because the city has always quiet this type of information. That's why the mayor's not here. If it, if, if it was more tragic, which this is tragic enough for all of us, or there was a political opportunity, he would have shown up. But it's that has to change. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Benny. We have Jared. Thank you. Uh, just going off of the suggestion to broaden the language, um, perhaps it could say uh, anyone directly or indirectly impacted. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe broad, broad enough. Okay. Uh, Vince, could we make a sort of press release, like a proclamation? Or I guess that's what a community impact statement is for immediate release. Correct, it doesn't have a council file on it, but what we can do is make a cover sheet for it and send the letter plus the supporting letters from the, from the orgs that are supporting it and we can send it out as a press release that way. That doesn't need a motion. We just need to make a cover sheet for it. The letter, the motion itself to approve the letter needs to be done, but you can do a cover sheet. Okay, what's the ETA? So we're gonna uh, submit this letter 
if we were to submit it with letters uh, from community orgs, uh, we would want to get it out by what Monday? Like, what? What's your date? Do you think as soon as well, possible, right? I think as soon as possible, and that's up to the orgs. I know everyone's busy, but if they can just simply write on a a, a joint letter or a letter of support on the action we're making today and get it to Sarah and Fernanda. As soon as we receive those, we can send them out. Like a packet. Exactly. Yeah, like a press packet <laughs> or whatever. And then we'll have more power. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, we we have, uh, so we'll go for a vote. So roll call vote on the, on the letter. Motion to approve uh, by Vince and uh, second by Ben. All right, so the yes vote is to approve the letter. Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Emily? Mm -hmm. Emily? We'll come back yes. to Emily. Yes. Yes. Melanie? Yes. Jared? Yes. Gil? Yes. Steve? Yes. Selena? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. Sylvia? I don't believe I'm allowed to vote on anything yet. This is not a funding. It's not a funding item. Oh, my bad. Yes. Okay. All right, then that is 14. Unanimous, yes, motion carries. Okay, motion carries. Thank you everybody for all the presenters, Boys and Girls Club, the Art Center, all the callers from the public. So we're gonna get this letter out. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're gonna move on, uh, you know, okay, so uh, I said this meeting will last till eight. So I'm going to have to change the agenda a little bit. I'm gonna to have to table item six, sorry. Maybe item seven, Vince, just cause we're still waiting on the August one anyway. I wanna just move to, uh, Item 8A, uh, discussion possible action to appoint a member to, as a sub to the William Mead Community Advisory Council. Now this is for the redevelopment that's happening. And we have, it's me who's on there and we need a sub. Um, they have a meeting like once every month or once every couple of months. Um, I wanna appoint Vince if you're available. Vince, if you wanna be on it. Yeah, I'll take it. If no one else does, I'll take no, it. Does anybody else want to do it? Then we'll have to vote between members. <clears throat> okay, so uh, discussion or discussion? Anybody? Uh, any community uh, comments on that item? No, so we're gonna take it for a roll call vote. Well, well, we need a second on it. Sorry. Second. Okay, Jared seconds. I, I move. So, uh, yes, vote is to approve Vince as the uh, sub uh, person on the advisory board. So, roll call vote, please. Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Emily? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Jared? Yes. Gil? Yes. Steve? Yes. Selena? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. And Sylvia? W? Yes. Okay. That's unanimous. Motion carries. Motion carries. 
my two taps instead of one. All right, so we'll move on to 8B, discussion possible action to a point six, or it could be seven, board members to accept, attend Civic U 1.0 2022. That's by Empower LA, it's a series of classes. Um, does anybody wanna be to do this? Uh, I, I will appoint you. I'm interested. Okay, so Vince. I'll I'll do so it. Am I. You know yeah, I'm, a, I'm interested. It? Okay, so so we got Vince, Sarah, Benny, Fernanda. Yeah. Sorry. Who Mel else? Melanie. Mel. All right. Anybody else? Okay, so uh I guess I moved to a point. Uh Vince, myself, Benny, Fernia, Fernanda, and Mel for the Civic Civic U. Uh do I have a second? I have a second. Okay, second by Vince. Uh, board discussion. Are these? Pick, is uh, this... oh, go ahead, Fernie. Go ahead. Um, is Civic U virtual this year, or is it in person? It's on Zoom. Cool. Yeah, it's like four four little things. Uh, it's on that uh, newsletter they sent, the Lincoln Heights newsletter, the Empower LA one. It has like the links on there. Um, okay, so uh, that's any other board member questions. Comments? Okay, we'll move on to public questions or comments. Please raise your hand or press star nine. Seeing none, I guess we'll go to a roll call vote. So it's a move by me, second by Vince. Uh, Motion is to approve the appointees for Civic U, Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Annalie? We'll go back to Annalie. Melanie? Yes. Jared? Yes. Gil? Yes. Steve? Yes. Steve? Selena? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. Sylvia? Sylvia? Uh, yes. And Emily? Actually, Emily is no longer on the call and we have lost quorum. Well, we've lost quorum, man. All right, Bummer. Mm. She's not on the attendee side. Okay, so we've lost quorum. So uh, she's I, there. She's there. I see oh. her name. Hey, I don't know why it stopped. Uh, were you talking about? Me? Okay. So what's your vote? My uh, my uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. It like logged me off and then it logged me back on. I don't know. No. All right. All right. So yes. <laughs> So that's unanimous, motion carries, and we have Gilbert's hand up. Uh, yes, uh, I see we have lost a couple of people and uh, I do have a business associate supposed to be calling me after eight o'clock. Uh, do you think we're gonna have much, be much longer? No, we're gonna be about five more, like maybe two more minutes. Two more, two or three more minutes here. Uh, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to 8C. Announcements of vacancies. I'm hereby announcing the vacancies as of September 15, 2022. Youth rep ending in 2025, that's a vacancy. Uh, biz business rep ending 2025. Another business rep ending 2023. Community-based org rep ending 2025. Another community-based org rep ending 2023. We need an area three representative resident ending 2023. We need an area four representative resident ending 2023. And finally, an area six representative resident ending 2023. And we have the link on the agenda there um, to the application um, and the details. And so uh, secretary, treasurer, or uh, vice president, do we have any uh, application submissions for any of the vacancies? I have not received any. Okay. I haven't either. All right. We got that youth rep in there. We need a new youth rep. 
All right, so now we're gonna to go to item nine, uh, committee reports. So we're just gonna run down the committee. Uh, a, outreach and events committee. Uh, that'll be Vince and Nancy. Uh, so uh, any reports? No, just that we're gonna be having our, our first meeting since I was, a, I was appointed to chair and I'll be working with Nancy. And so we're gonna hopefully start working on a couple of projects that are gonna come in up, which include probably like like the movie night since we bought all the material for it and we're just uh we're in need of the projector now um and we'll put that on our agenda to discuss with nancy and some ideas and um we're also looking into possibly doing um like a rep area like um uh yard sales to bring people together because that's always something good to be able to clear out a garage or some stuff you want to get rid of um, stuff that can be donated and then also have the uh, waste management have the bends out so that if you guys you guys have any bulky items they can pick them up right then and there so that we're they don't end up on our streets so we're working on a couple of those projects and we hope that the public comes in and we also have seats open up for the for stakeholders that are not board members that can participate on our outreach so we encourage that you can contact myself or nancy soto and uh, we hope to see everyone at our first meeting Thank you. Uh, hi, sorry, I have an announcement too. Okay, yeah. I, hi, this is Nancy. Um, we uh, are also going to be at the Healthy Neighborhoods Resource Fair that um, the Wall Las Memorias is um, uh, setting up for everyone. Um, so it's today, I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday, September 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. And then after that, they're screening a movie. So they're having movie night. And this is at Lincoln Park at the wall, Las Memorias, at the AIDS Monument. Uh, so yeah, so we'll be there. And then also, um, we've been in talks with the Natural History Museum for some time now. And we have a date for our Lincoln Heights date at the Natural History Museum. So October 1st. Uh, so we're having our, uh, we'll, we'll all get um, like a, a special code with free entrance. Uh, all day Saturday, October first. So th there's more to come on that. Oh, that's a good. Maybe you could link up with the Boys and Girls Club, like shuttles or something. That yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool. Thank you. We're gonna move to the Planning and Landings Committee. That's me and Benny. Um, I have an announcement about uh, on Saturday at the library, at the Lincoln Heights Library at two p.m. They're showing a movie um, for you know anybody who wants to go. It's like Buzz Lightyear movie, but it's for kids, you know? Um, so they're utilizing the space for events. It would be good uh, for any families. Um, what are my things? So uh, we're gonna have our next planning and landing meeting on um, September 21st. And if that doesn't line up, September 28th. And I wanna make a comment. Um, we may be absorbing some of Chinatown's uh, land use issues because there has not been uh, they need some help and it directly affects our community and those are uh, developments around uh, Dogtown William Mead and uh, so we're going to be uh, helping our neighbors by picking up some of the uh, land use issues that may be sliding under the radar and uh, uh, let's see um, and then we're uh, we're uh, thinking about uh, with Parks and Rec um, with looking at the state of the park today, Lincoln Heights Recreation Center, we have a 99 cent, it needs uh, community oversight. So we're going to work on uh, forming, we don't have a community, uh, what is it called Vince, a CPAB or community no, advisory board? Yeah, PAB board. Park park advisory park for board. all the other neighborhoods, they have these community advisory boards for all their parks. We don't have one for any of our parks. So that means that, you know, they're, we're not really uh, having a say in anything. and. Uh, for instance, we don't even know when they're going to be done that renovation at Lincoln Heights Rec, you know, it's, so we need to monitor. And uh, I guess that is it for me. Benny, any, any comments from Pluck? No, I, you pretty much covered it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, C, Environmental Justice, that's events, Environmental Justice Committee. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one short and quick. Right now, the hottest topic in Los Angeles in, in our district right now, 
Well, there's a couple. There was the Avenue 34 with this contaminated site. There's the Paseo del Rio project, which is north of us, is the old Taylor yard that's being turned into a park. That same contaminants that are in Avenue 34 we have there. And there's also the Bowtie Loft project that's on the other side of the river. That's another huge issue on more contaminated land. Um, and we're also probably gonna take on the topic too of water in Los Angeles and the future of our drinking water, which currently right now they wanna use the Alley River water as drinking water. So you could imagine that, which is affecting the commodity of the, uh, uh, I mean, not the commodity, but the, the way the city was using it for the building. So the amenities that they wanted to use it for like kayaking, fishing, the river might not even have the water there. They, they're recapturing. And in fact, the mayor already funded the project and signed it into place. So that should be a, a, a wild thing in the river on what we're going to have to deal with. It's, it's nature versus the need for human to extend. And I think we all need to be on that topic since it's going to be in our drinking water and we need to know what we're doing for the future for our children. So that, that'll that be on our next list on on the uh, Environment Committee, Environmental Justice Committee. All right, thank you, Vince. What's the ETA on the date for your next meeting? Uh, we should be having them by the, towards the end of this month. Okay. Middle okay and end. All the committees are supposed to have a meeting, you know, ideally once a month. So we've been, you know, I, I, yeah, so, you know, if there's not items then maybe you won't, but, uh, okay. All right. So at the end of the month. All right. So we're going to move on to item D, uh, um, services committee. That will be uh, Jared. Yes. Um, if anybody would like to join the programs and services committee, please reach out to me. Um, I have some ideas. I know we're running late, but reach out to me and, and I want to hear your ideas and looking for anyone and everyone from the board or the community who would like to participate. Cool. Thank you, Jared. And then we have a uh, elections committee, Selena. Hi, so I wanted to send out an agenda, uh, maybe tomorrow, early tomorrow or later this evening for a special meeting for Sunday. Um, I'll go ahead and email you, Sarah or Chente for the, for the Zoom link information. Maybe it could be the same one from the last canceled meeting. Um, I'll send that over to you, Sarah, and you can let me know. But so for this Sunday, um, hopefully one o'clock. Okay, cool. So that's for elections committee. And also, I just I just want to let everybody know because I know after after the candidate forum in May, like things slow down a little bit, but I don't want anybody to think that like I'm being lazy or inattentive. I'm applying to law school and it's been it's been like really hectic for me. And I'm just trying to not spread myself too thin, but also do my best here, you know. So yeah, let me know if you need help with that. I'm in the trash. Oh, oh, I have a lot of material. Yeah, it's a little pretty great. But yeah, I just I wanted to, you know, just communicate that with you guys. So, you know. All right. We would never think you're lazy ever, Selena. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Selena. All right. So we have F holiday committee. That'll be Annalie and Richard. Annalie. Annalie. Okay, skip that one. G, Government Liaison Committee. I don't know if that's really a committee. <laughs> it's me, but uh, I don't really have any updates. I was hoping to see Holland back here today without an invitation, but they're not here. Yeah, they're not tuned in. All right, thank you, Selena. Uh, H, Rules and Bylaws Committee. Ben Wadsworth, any updates? No? All right. Uh, all right. Ten Tenants Rights Committee, Fernanda, and it's ad hoc. Um, we have a letter for tenants. So if you know anybody that needs a letter that needs to be submitted to their landlord, we have one uh, ready to go. There's a template for um, if they're illegally raising their rent or they're trying to evict them and stuff like that. Um, and also a side note, if any of the committees like want to create flyers or brochures, you can totally contact me and I can help with that. 
And I want to mention CD14 uh, sent us an email. So it went to council this week through the housing committee, um, the city. So the count, county and the city are uh, ending the eviction moratoriums and this is super intense. So the city of LA has proposed February to end the uh, eviction uh, protections. That's a city. Uh, initially it was proposed for August, but now they're pushing it back. So CD14 wrote uh, their housing, they have a new housing rights sort of guy. So they wrote a letter uh, opposing the housing department's recommendation for February, opposing it to protect the tenants. So uh, that could be an item on the tenants rights committee, right? We should have a letter on file with that council file maybe. Uh, it's uh, gonna cause mass, whatever, mass homelessness. Yeah, I was going to propose a CIS for the next um, mm -hmm. item on the agenda. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, cool. So, uh, sorry to talk so much. All right, item 10, request emotions for future agenda items. Anybody from, the, well, let's go to the public. Anybody from the public have any requests for future agenda items? Raise your hand or press star nine to speak. Okay, I don't see any. Okay, so uh, board members, did we receive any requests or do you have any? Chanta? Little hands up. Uh, yes, I just wanna back up what Fernanda said. It's gonna be important for us to give a community impact statement uh, on the renters, uh, the end of the, the moratorium. I think one of the key things to keep into consideration that's real important about the, the an issue on the moratorium is the rent increases. So. If it's ending in February of 2023, it cannot raise the rents until February of 2024. But one of the main problems that we have to write and fight on that issue, one is because when people are on public assistance, or even if you're working, you do not get a 3% increase every year to keep up with the demand of your rent. So that in itself is really a push out rate. It was put in there to help the landlords, but I think we need a strengthen language in it to say that we oppose it basically, basically because it's a push out rate. One day in, you know, you can afford 1200 because you might be on full security. Next month when it goes up, you're literally, your whole paycheck is going to pay rent and you don't get that increase. You're naturally going to be evicted from the area. And so I think that's something important that if we fight for one thing is to keep the increases from going up, but really fight on all the issues not to lift. We're not ready for it. Thank I think you. the big thing is the uh, the housing is key only covered up till uh, March 2023 and a lot of people didn't even know about it. So, you know, a certain amount of people got up to 20 months compensate, you know, paid for. It. So there's this area between April 2022 and now whenever they declare this end of the eviction moratorium, that's February, we need that whole chunk. Now, Newsom gave some more money, but it's for people whose applications were processed back in the last housing is key. There has been no money allocated for this window, right? So what's gonna happen is if anybody hasn't, if they have outstanding rent for those months, April, 2022 to February, 2023, they're gonna have to pay it all or they're gonna get evicted in February. So we gotta write something, I don't know. Uh, major. Uh, okay. Any other uh, requests? I'm going to make a recommendation. We received a question from the community about parking. So we're going to refer that either, I guess we could do it to programs and services or planning and land use. So we'll think about it. It has to do with like the future developments and the parking is getting really bad. Any other recommendations? I don't see none. Okay, so uh, Vince? Okay, I'd like to make the motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, I don't hear any abstentions, none. The meeting officially ends at 829. Thank you all for holding in. Thank you for the public. We'll see you all at the committee meetings in our next meetings. This meeting is adjourned, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.